Hi friend, welcome back. Well, we continue with James' theme this week that faith by itself is dead. It is worthless. It is useless. And today he gives us a living, breathing example. I've enjoyed this. Let's go ahead and pray and we'll dig in. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the examples that we have in your word of of uh, helping us better know who you are and what it looks like to have real faith in you. Thank you for the example of Abraham. Help us to glean from him today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's read. This is James chapter 2, verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. Oh, even when I read this out loud, I notice another detail that I want to dig into. All right, so... James, as I said in the beginning, James provides us with an example of this argument that he is making, that faith by itself is dead, it's worthless. So he gives us an example of someone who uh, had faith, but proved it by his works. And so I did. I answered those who, what, where, when, how kinds of questions. Who, obviously, is Abraham? When? When did he show his faith by works? When he offered up, James said, when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar. So we need to understand, if we're new to scripture, we need to understand who is Abraham? And this is when the cross references are golden. The cross reference here takes us back to Genesis chapter 22. And there's a number of verses there, but we can read this story of when Abraham offered up his son Isaac uh, as a sacrifice. All right. Now, he ended up not actually sacrificing uh, Isaac, but it, it, the gist is we need to understand who Abraham is. Abraham is an important person in the whole scope of the Bible, but we see his story in Genesis chapter 12, verses 25. He holds this key place as the patriarch of the nation of Israel. And through Abraham, God had promised that uh, he would bless the world through Abraham's descendants. Like Abraham's descendants would be plentiful, but for years and years and years, Abraham did not have an heir, did not have a son until Isaac. Isaac was this promised heir and all the world was to be blessed through Isaac. So it was very confusing when God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son, take him up to the mountain to be sacrificed. But when we look back, when we read, we understand that this was a test. This was a test. Uh, James says it this way, you see that faith was active along with his works and faith was completed by his works. So uh, understanding, uh, oh, okay, well, maybe I should go back to verse 21 too. Was not Abraham our father justified by works, by his works? So here's some words we need to understand. I did write down justified. To be justified is to be vindicated. It's to be shown to be right by providing justification or providing proof. Who doesn't want to be shown to be right? Uh, who doesn't want to be proved right? Uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I think of my husband. Yeah, I like to be right, <laughs> okay? Um, but here, this is much bigger. This is about our faith being proven right. How was Abraham's faith proven? He did not withhold his only son from God. He obeyed God when God asked him 
to sacrifice his son. And it wasn't until like Abraham, yes, Abraham believed uh, and by his belief that was counted to him as righteousness. We see that all the way back in Genesis chapter 12, but it's here in Genesis 22 where Abraham's faith is proven. It's completed. This word complete means to be perfected. It's shown to be without defect or blemish. And so it, it wasn't until like Abraham uh, packed up the things needed for the sacrifice. He and his son Isaac climbed up the mountain. He's actually binding his own son and placing him on the altar when God stops him. And he says, this is Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 22, verse 12. Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And he goes on to say how he will surely bless Abraham through his son, Isaac. All right. And so the, that's the gist of the story. I don't know. I don't feel like I've explained that very well this morning. Probably most of you are quite familiar with this story and it's a repetition, but I think it's important for us to slow down as we seek to understand the meaning of James's words, the meaning of his example. So Abraham has this faith, this faith we've been talking about is a trust, is a strong reliance, is a strong confidence in God. And he proved it by offering up his son Isaac on the altar, such that he ends up being called a friend of God. And we see cross references there. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse seven, Isaiah 41, eight says this, but you Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend. So this is God himself refers to Abraham as my friend. Oh, friends, wanna be a friend of God? Have faith and prove your faith by your works. You know, just to understand what is a friend, I actually put that down in my keyword column too. A friend is a person that you know well and regard with affection and trust. All right, God being a friend, a person that we know well and regard with love and with trust. All right, God is our friend. And did you know that that can be flipped around and we can be God's friend. We can be someone, we can be that person that God knows well and regards with affection, with great love, and he trusts. Oh, let's be trustworthy today. Let's be trustworthy in our faith. I couldn't help by thinking of, you know, okay, looking at the main point, faith is completed by one's works. Like the proof is in the pudding. And my mind went to a good friend of mine who's been gone many, many years now. And I remember when she was diagnosed with cancer, she had three little ones. And she just said, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where my faith is tested. Oh, friend, she was a friend of God. So I think for application, we're challenged here, aren't we? At least I'm challenged to know and to love and to trust God, uh, to be his friend, to be his friend by my obedience. And so if he says peace, then have peace. If he says, don't worry, then Carmen, trust him. Don't worry. If he says to forgive, I need to forgive. If he says to give, I need to give. Be 
a doer of his word. And not only when life is all hunky-dory, but be a doer of his word when we are in the midst of trials. That takes us back to the very beginning of James's letter when he says, blessed are those who persevere in the midst of trials. All right, we're meant to be doers of the word. We're meant to be God's friend and to hold on to our faith, to stand firm in the midst of trials. Mm -hmm.